Hello, so I got here a Proxmox backup server, and Proxmox backup server is fantastic if you want to back up your Proxmox virtual machines or containers, but what if you want to also back up a TrueNAS server to your Proxmox backup server? That is what I am here to do today. So I have Proxmox backup server in version 2.1-1, which is the most recent as of this recording. And I have TrueNAS, and I have TrueNAS Scale specifically, because that's the Linux-based version instead of the BSD-based version. And this is also the latest release, 22.02 uh, RC2, as of the filming of this. And um, I have some data here that I want to back up. For example, my projects, I've got some data sets here that, that we'd like to back up the data on to the Proxmox backup server, which also will contain backups for virtual machines and containers. So I'm going to walk through the process of how I have set this up for my lab and basically how it works. So the first step here over on the TrueNAS system is we need to install the Proxmox backup client. So Proxmox backup client is a command line utility that works with Proxmox backup server to allow us to do host backups. They show up in the backup server as host. If we were to have any, which we currently don't, we could look at the files and the archives and restore individual files or mount file systems from the backup or whatever. So we need to get this backup client installed on TrueNAS. And TrueNAS doesn't natively integrate with Proxmox backup server, so we have to do a little bit of it manually. No, a lot of it manually. Um, but because I've used, I'm using TrueNAS Scale, this is a Debian-based version, and Proxmox is also Debian-based, so they have packages available already. So in order to install Proxmox Backup Client, we first have to install the Debian repository for Proxmox. And they have one that uh, just has the client repository. So first we need to set up the key. So I have Putty here. I've logged in as root. I had enabled SSH server with root access just so I could do this because you can't copy and paste in the TrueNAS shell so I need to install the, um, the GPG key from Proxmox's repository. There we go. And next we need to add the client-only repository. I'm going to add this to sources.list. Okay, so now, now that we've got the Proxmox Backup Client repository added, we can just install it. So we apt get update, and that updates all the package lists. It should download the package list from PBS Client. Yep, there we go. Then we can install it. And yes, here we go. Okay, all done. So now we're going to experiment a little bit with the backup client so we can see generally how it works and how backups end up in Proxmox. So now that we have it installed, I'm going to use the shell built into the web UI because I don't need to copy and paste anything. So if we just call Proxmox backup client, we're running as root, so we have full permissions will give us a little bit of overview of all the things we can do. Um, so the, the command we use most often is just backup. So we want to do backup. So if we read the usage here, it tells us generally how we need to do things. Um, but one important thing to remember is that we it's easiest if we just set these environment variables of the repository and the password, so we don't have to keep typing them in every time. And eventually we'll have to add these to our script or something. But for now we're gonna we're gonna create these environment variables locally just for our temporary session. And so the repository needs to look something like this. So user at pb at realm at the IP address for the host of the backup server and then colon the data store. So in back in Proxmox, we're gonna create a new user for this. We're gonna call them TrueNAS. 
Yeah, so we'll add him. We're going to give him permission. So he doesn't have any permissions now. And so we're going to give um, we give him permissions to the data stores. And he can do data store backup, which means that they can read and write their own data stores. So there we have a new user called TrueNAS. He has access to data stores. And we can come back here, try to yeah, so that's roughly what our um, repository should be like. We want to name it PBS Repository. So we're going to, so username at PBS, which is the realm, at 221. Yeah. And then our data store is called Backup. That's our repository. And then we have a password, too. Um, you could also do this with an API key instead of with a user account, but I created a user account just for this purpose. Obviously, you'd want to pick a more secure password, but this is just for, for testing here. So we have PBS repository and PBS password set. So now we can try to do a backup. And what do we actually want to backup? So if we like list the root directory on TrueNAS, TrueNAS puts all of the ZFS data sets in the mount location here, so mount. So if we look at mount, we have our, our one pool now, which is called tank. And within there, I have a data set called projects. So back to storage, you see I have projects, and I have another data set under there called subproject. And these are both separate data sets in ZFS, and we could either choose to back them up together or back them up separately. And that's a big question that you have to answer for yourself. So coming back here, um, as a mount tank, let's let's back up projects and see what we get. So if we go back to the usage, what we need to do is we need to say backup client backup, and then we need to give it the name of a Pixar file, which is a Proxmox archive, and tell it what what path that archive should go to. And then we can leave out the repository because we already set the environment variables for that. Actually, we should make sure we set them again. So. So projects.pixar, we're going to say it's mount slash tank slash projects. There you go. Say yes, because we've never connected to the server before, so we've got to validate the fingerprint. Said yes. Yeah, there we go. So notice here it said skipping mount point sub project. That's because by default, Proxmox will only back up the file system of the path that you told it to back up. So if you tell the backup root, it won't back up any other file systems other than root. So if we go in Proxmox backup server, let's see what we got here. So we got a host TrueNAS. So TrueNAS was the host name of the system, so that's how it got its name. And we have a backup from it, and it contains one Pixar called Projects. And if we look at the files in it, you can see our subproject doesn't have anything in it, but the folder is there because subproject is a, another data set. So each ZFS data set is mounted separately. So Proxmox backup client doesn't see that as a folder that it should back up, but it, it still captures the existence of the folder. And these two files in this folder were all on the project's data set, so they got backed up. So now what if we want to back up everything in the entire folder? Now what we could do is we could add one line to this to tell Proxmox to back up all of the sub um, sub volumes within this volume. So if we have a data set and we have some data sets nested underneath it, uh, Proxmox backup client sees those each as separate file systems and only backs up the top one. But if we add to this the command dash dash all file systems true, now it'll back up everything. So here again it's set it to backup. We go to the backup server see what we got. Now we have a new backup. Again, we have a project that picks our, and this time our subproject folder has the contents of the subproject in it because we told it to back up everything. So that's generally how this command works, at least for files. It can also back up um, zvols too, but they can't be mounted because the backup client has to have access to read the zvol to capture it as an image. So now let's write a shell script to do this for us, now that we know how to use the backup client. 
So I created a new data set here called Backup, and I'm going to create a shell script on this um, data set to contain the files that are part of the backup system. So I'll back up the projects and subproject. And so we'll go in here and we'll make a new well, CD to their CD to that new folder. So we have nothing in here yet. We got a new script. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set those environment variables again that uh, say where the server is. So PBS repository. So our username or our API key, and then at the realm, which is PBS, at the server address. Which in this case is 8.2.2.1, and then the backup name, which in this case is called backup. And that's all from here. So this is the IP address of the server. The data store is called backup. The user I created for that has access to backup to this location is called TrueNAS. And then the password or the API secret. So that's that's our authentication information now. So now we need to decide what we want to back up. And if you look over here, we have this projects.pixar. If we like to back up more than one data set, we can just chain together each of the backup commands into the same call to Proxmox backup client, and we'll end up with one backup that has more than one Pixar to it. So in this case, we'd like to So we want to back up the project data set. So I'm using this variable called spec, and I'm just going to keep adding to it in the script as I will have more and more things I want to back up. So I want to back up the project data set. We're going to call, we're going to call that backup projects.pixar. And it's going to be come from mount tank projects. There. So then I also want to back up the backup data set itself that includes the backup information. And maybe this data set has other stuff on it. Or maybe I have more than one data set that I want to back up and I want to keep them as separate Pixars. Or maybe I have more than one pool and I want to back them up each as separate Pixars. There's my backup specification. So I'm going to create a backup called projects.pixar from this path and a backup called backup.pixar from that path. So now we need to actually call the backup client. That'll tell us what the spec is, just in case we have any debugging we need to do. And then we call the backup client. We tell it we want to backup. We tell it the spec, which is our it's going to be the word. It's going to be this string, and it's going to be this string. So it tells the backup client what we want to backup. And then in this case, we're going to tell it all file systems. And that will tell it that because we're backing up projects, we also want to back up subprojects too. Now, in this case, I'm doing this because if I create new data sets under projects, maybe to give different projects different quotas or whatever reason I have, I want to make sure that they all still get backed up. And so by structuring my data sets in certain ways and only backing up the top level ones, I can ensure that I shouldn't be missing anything on the backup because I still have to make sure that if I add new data sets that are that aren't a sub data set of one of these, I have to add it to this this script file here or won't get included in the Proxmox backup. So by telling it all file systems, that ensures that at least if I create new data sets underneath these two, they'll still end up in the archive. You may not want to do that. You may want to add each one individually, and that's fine. It's up to you. So we'll save that and then we'll make it executable. And then if we try to run it, what do we get? Backup. Okay, so we come to the backup server. Got a new backup. This time we got two. We got backup.pixar and we got projects.pixar. So if we look at backup.pixar, it's got the backup file itself. And if we look at projects.pixar, it's got all of the same data we had before. So great, so the shell script works. So now the next step is to do this repeatedly. 
So we can go here into System Advanced and add a cron job to do this, say, hourly. Um, on the Proxmox backup server side, it has settings of when to retain data. So if we run the cron job frequently, as long as it doesn't take longer than the interval between the cron jobs to actually do the backup, then we should be fine. So I'm going to tell this to run every, every hour. And then on Proxmox, backup server will tell it to, to, to discard backups with a certain interval. So we're going to say proxmox, and the command is slash mount, slash tank. So back up at sh, and we're going to run it as root. So we can say daily, we can say hourly at the start of each hour. We're going to hide the output, but not hide the errors. So if it gets any errors, we'll get an email, because that's how cron works. There we go. So now if I say next run in an hour. So if I just force it to run now, it says it completed successfully. If we go back over here, we had three backups. Now we have four. So this will run on its own. So the last step in a good backup system is how to restore the backup. So if we go to the manual on the backup client, there's a number of options we can restore data. So if we don't have a lot of data, if we accidentally deleted some files and we didn't set up snapshots in TrueNAS or the snapshots don't go back far enough, maybe we have longer term archiving in Proxmox backup server, we can come here and we can click on the little folder and we can get our file back. So all of our files are, are here and we can view them. And if I just wanted to view this one file, I could click download. And what do you know, it's on my desktop now. Uh, so that's the first option. The other option, if we lost all of our data and need to restore all of it from the Proxmox backup, is to mount the backup as a file system, which is a feature that Proxmox supports, and copy the whole thing. So Proxmox has a feature that, where you can mount a backup, and if we do that, then we can use we can do rsync and copy from the mounted file system onto the ZFS system. And so here's an example of how you would do that. So we need to call Proxmox Backup Client. We want to tell it to mount. And then we needed to tell it where, where we're going. So where our backup is. So our host, our, our data store, and our backup name. And then we also need to tell it what, which Pixar we're restoring and where we want to put it. Um, So if we get out of here. So let's make a new mount point because we need a folder just to be a mount point. So we'll create a new folder called mount backup. And that's not the backup um, folder in the tank. It's just a, an empty folder that we're going to use as a mount point. So now we're going to see, make sure we still have the environment variable set that we set earlier. So repository and password. So then we proxmox mount and the command. So now we need to know the name of the backup. So what's our most recent backup here? It's this guy. So host slash true and slash 2022.0202 and t23.19.06z. So that's that, and then we want to mount projects.pixar. We want to mount it at slash mount slash backup. There we go. So now if we ls mount backup, our what used to be in our projects folder is now here because we've mounted it from the server. And what this does is Proxmox backup server uses Fuse, which is the Linux file system and user space system to create a virtual file system that is backed by the server. So every time we access a file in this mount backup folder, it's not actually on our computer. It's going over the network to the Proxmox backup server, which is digging through its archives and retrieving this file and bringing it back to us. So that is it. That is how I've set up TrueNAS to push backups of data in data sets to Proxmox backup server. Uh, as a, as a long-term archival solution, Proxmox Backup Server is definitely a thing to consider, even if you're backing up TrueNAS, and even though it's not officially supported via the GUI in TrueNAS.